Welcome guys, uh, so I'm on my last Crimson Vow draft, uh, number 13, so we'll see if it's uh, lucky. Got a couple, two and a half hours, left, well, a bit more than two and a half hours. Right, Garalf Visionary Stitcher is absolutely fantastic for the zombie deck. Um, I used to say pick the best card from the first five packs, but this guy is definitely a good enough reason to go blue-black zombies from pack one. Uh, the Mark of Purify, that's good for the um, black black-white life gain deck. That's a good payoff card that lets you draw, lo draw lots of cards. Bit of hand destruction. Hand destruction. Maybe that's good. I usually just ignore these cards. But so it's going to be three mana to get rid of a card, I guess. It's just late game. It's going to be useless. Or we just start loading up on zombies. There is mind leech ghoul here. But I think one light spirit's quite good, but it's a spirit. Siphon essence is a decent counter spell. Right, let's. Uh, yeah, I'm commit. I'm committed to the zombies. Let's get the mind leech ghoul. It's because it's a zombie. We'll see how this goes. I mean, we might just be unlucky. There might not. There's no guarantee there's going to be zombies, but uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay. And this is a terrible pack for blue and black. We've got a choice between Dreadlight Monstrosity and Blood Craze Socialite, who is a vampire. I mean, that's an okay card, I guess. We could get Blood Servitor. Uh, I'm, I'm not excited to play Blood Servitor. Well, we might have to play a Blood Craze Socialite. I mean, it's a good card, but uh, obviously we want to play zombies, but that's the whole idea. Um, Cruel Witness is a decent bird horror. 3-3 three, three flyer, steel clad spirit. So, and there's, yeah, the Lantern Bearer we know is quite good as well. I think it's the Cruel Witness here. Binding Geist, Grizzly Ritual, Mind Leech Ghoul. Okay. Mind Leech Ghoul is the zombie. We'll grab that. Okay, it's going to give me a lot of Mind Leech Ghouls, apparently. But we do have Repository Scarb here as well. And Chill at the Grave. But let's, let's try to fill out... I think I want to fill out the creatures first. Okay, we see our first Wretched Throng. Grab that. Okay, uh, yeah, blue and black seem to be in short supply here. Uh, I don't know if we'd play the Steel Clad Spirit. I guess it's a 3-3 a three, three wall, basically. Uh, I could take Honored Heirloom, because it gives me a bit of mana fixing, if you want to splash Wedding Announcement or something like that. Um, right, Chill of the Grave, then. Well, the Dread Fugue came back. Let's grab that. Got serious um, hand uh, destruction going on. Oh, we'll take a Blood Servitor. That's fine. That's an uh, uncommon for the collection. And for the collection. Looks like uh, green was pretty open in that back. Oh, a voice of the blessed. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously I'm I am picking for my collection. That will be my first one of those, which is very nice. Yes, the life gain deck could have been amazing, but uh, too late to worry about that now. Uh, Guys, light snare is a good counter spell. Oh, that's the one that goes with the spirits. So I think we just ignore that one. That turns into a vampire. We have repository. 
another repository scarb. So if we get some good instants and sorceries, this is going to get really good. But right now, yeah, we've just got Chill of the Grave, I think. Oh, and Dread Fugue. And it is a, it's a four drop. I think I like Diagraph Scavenger because it's, 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 it is also a zombie bear with Death Touch. I think we go for a, make sure we have at least one Diagraph Scavenger. That can be very useful. Okay, Parasitic Grasp. Now, this is a nice removal spell. I think that is what we go for. We've got, oh, we have another Wretched Throng, Repository Scarb, Diagraph Scavenger. We're going to hope that, that Wretched Throng at least uh, wheels around. So it's, there's three decent cards there. That would be at pick 11. But I think we take the removal card. Storm Chaser Drake's a pretty good flyer. Uh, Blood Fountain's good. Zombie Kraken's really good. I think, uh, yeah, Zombie Kraken. One thing we've got to look out for are the... Uh, the um, ah, fodder creatures. Things you can sacrifice sort of over and over again. Could be really good. But I think uh, there's an obvious pick here, and it is Bleed Dry. I think this... <laughs> I feel like this is the first Bleed Dry I've managed to... Um, draft. I played against someone who got three bleed dries, which is very impressive. Right. Uh, Desperate Farmer. He's not a zombie, but I think that's a quite a good card. There's also the Selhof in Tuma, which is a zombie, and uh, it's kind of a good enabler. I think, um, yeah. It's funny, even though Desperate Farmer's really good, I think I want the uh, I want the zombie. It's kind of a tricky one. Uh, what is the benefit of having a zombie? It's it gets flying from Geralf, and makes Chill of the Grave cheaper. I think that is about it, really, isn't it? Um, I think... Let's go Desperate Farmer here. I think that's just caught a better card than Solhoff and Tuma. Okay. Yeah, I like Blood Fountain quite a lot. Uh, Diagraph Scavenger is really good, but we've already got one. If we look at our mana curve... Okay, we need... More early stuff. We want seven two drops. It should go two one drops, seven two drops, six three drops, four four drops, three fives and one six. So we're already doing well in the four drop slot. But uh, I think I'd uh, might drop Blood Craze Socialite. Yeah, I take a Blood Fountain here. So I've got a bit more stuff going on early. Cool. So we've got Undying Malice, which is pretty darn good, especially with Exploit. Unhallowed Phalanx is specifically really good with the uh, the Catapult. I think there's no guarantee we'll get the Catapult. I I want to try. I, I have tried that strategy before, but I think I'll go with Undying Malice. I think this is going to be better. This is more likely to be better, so we'll go for that. Wretched Throng, fantastic. Because um, I've already got one Wretched Throng. I think that that puts this slightly ahead of Doom Dissenter, which is also a great card. A great sort of uh, fodder card. So um, go for the second Wretched Throng. Maybe, maybe we'll get three Wretched Throngs this zombie deck. My last one only, only had two, but... Yeah, another Repository Scarb. This does seem to wheel around. Uh, as I say, it does seem to wheel around. Ended up with three. I don't know if we play all of those. Second Blood Fountain's good. Sure, let's uh, take a Vampire Slayer. Okay, so we're, we've hit 22 cards here. Okay, Sigarda's Summons. Um, that's going to be my fourth copy of that, I believe. I'm just going to, obviously, I'm, I am rare drafting. So let grab that. Right, well that's a good werewolf card. There was a very good werewolf deck, I think, uh, in this draft. 
Uh, let's see, we've got another repository scarp. A syncopate is good. Doom Dissenter. There we go. I think we want another fodder card for our exploit strategy. Syncopate's really good, I think, as well. But uh, this goes with the strategy. Oh, look. Catapult fodder. It did turn up. So um, I think it's the best thing here. We'll grab that. There's an unhallowed phalanx to go with the catapult fodder. It's lined up very nicely. Um, there's just siphon essence as the other option. So let's take the phalanx. That's good fun. We might have another shot. I don't think I, I've had the catapult twice. I've never actually sacrificed a creature with it. Siphon essence is quite good, but I think des oh desperate farm is a three drop. I was thinking it was a two drop. Uh, but yeah, it would be a very good two drop. Uh, how much do we care about counter spells with the zombie deck? I think the zombie deck is trying to pile on the pressure and tap out. Um, yeah, I think I think I like desperate farmer in an when, it, when it's an exploit deck. You're going to get to flip this guy quite often. Ooh, Bloodsworn Squire. So Vampire Soldier can become indestructible, it's quite cool. But there's also Persistent Specimen, which goes with my Sacrifice theme. So I think this is this is on theme. We'll take the we'll take the theme card. Yeah, Brian Coma's pretty cool. I don't think there's anything here we uh, we want, so we'll just take this for the collection. Uh, yeah, ditto. There's nothing we're here we really want. I think I'll take this for the collection. I guess uh, the, the, there was the combat trick there, but it's not one I usually play. Uh, do we, I guess we'll just cut a few cards at the moment just to get a better picture of uh, our decks. I, would, I don't think I need an Oland Heirloom at the moment. I think these are all kind of playable. We might want to cut Blood Servitor because it's not that great. But potentially we cut Desperate Farmers as well. It's quite good, but uh, it's not a zombie. Uh, Blood Crisis Socialite. Potentially we cut as well. And that's pretty close to a deck. So yeah. So that's I've ended up cutting lots of three drops there. I uh, just want yeah, I think we'd uh, but we still want to play the Desperate Farmer, I think, over a um Blood Servitor. Uh I think I'll just take Cartographer's Survey for the collection, as it turns out. Okay, another repository scar. It's probably too many, but four of them is kind of insane. Uh, Chill of the grave. Yeah. Evolving wilds. Yeah. Right, okay, we'll just have a little look at what we've taken out. Let's put that Desperate Farmer back in. I'm quite comfortable leaving out the Blood Crazed Socialite. Yeah, I don't need Honored Heirloom. We could consider Blood Servitor because it could be Sacrifice Fodder. So that leaves us with four cards to cut. We'll look at the mana curve. Yeah, we didn't quite hit seven two drops. So, uh, as I said, it's, it should be two, seven, six, five, three, one, or thereabouts. So it says we, we, we're doing quite well in the one drops, and we've got maybe a few too many four drops from, on that basis. But I do like, I like all my repository scarbs. I think they're quite cool. I mean, Cruel Witness is quite good, but... Um, 
it is double blue, maybe we won't be able to cast it consistently. That's that's an argument for dropping it. It's not a zombie as well. Uh, and I guess this is where we do cut the blood servitor. That takes us down to six, three drops. I guess that's where we want to be. Just wondering, can we flip our catapult? How how good are we at flipping the catapult? Uh, looks like not too good. Digraph. Not a hell of phalanx. Yeah. But I don't think there's any help here for flipping the catapult. So. We need, yeah, we need two other creatures with toughness greater than their power. So the actual count in the deck is going to be one, two, three. Okay. Okay, that's pretty terrible. We're very unlikely to flip our catapult. Uh, which means, is it worth playing? A 1-5. When it's very unlikely to flip. We do have Blood Fountain, so that gives us a bit of creature selection. If uh, things die, we can get back the high toughness things, I suppose. Anyway, I think I'll, I'll, do, I'll just call that end of part one for the moment. And uh, I'll just tinker with the deck a little bit. Thanks for watching so far. And I'm back. Uh, yep, so... I just took a kind of mana curve decision. I've cut two of the repository scarbs, so we've still got two in the deck. I think I feel like two's probably enough. Um, and I'm kind of call me call me sentimental, but I I kind of like the catapult fodder. I've I've kept that in the deck, even though it's not not very likely to flip. Um, there is a toughness payoff, so Geroff can sacrifice a creature to make an XX where X is the toughness of the sacrifice creature. So that's that's maybe a justification for the catapult fodder. You know, it might you know, it might pay off. We'll see we'll see. Uh I've kept both Chill of the Graves, so it's it's a cantrip. It'll let me drop draw through my deck. Uh in theory. I've kept the Undying Malice. I think that's quite good in this deck. And the Dread Fugue, I think. Got a bit of quite quite a bit of um, hand destruction here with the mind leech ghoul as well. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, and there's actually not much blue in the deck I've noticed. So it's only seven islands, nine swamps. That's just that's just the automatic recommendation, uh, which which I think I'll, I'll go with because um, we've got an evolving wilds. So I think that makes sense. I think it was the right decision to go for zombies after the first after getting Geralf, because uh, uh, I think it's probably the best payoff card for the zombie deck. Okay, this is the number twenty-one mythic player in limited. We might have a, a bit of a game on our hands here. Okay, so three drop and a four drop. Got the uh, cantrip there. The only problem with Diagraph Scavenger might not have a target to uh, gobble up, unfortunately. I played the number three uh, mythic player yesterday. It's quite an epic game, actually. So blue red. Oh, I do not see blue red very often. Got to say. So this gets first strike as long as it's attacking, which will beat my desperate farmer. Uh, but that's okay. We'll play the desperate farmer anyway.
Oh yeah, uh, so he attacks with this, becomes a 3-3 three, three trample, and you get two mana. Well, that's pretty nice, gotta say. Um, we could tap that down, swing in and gain two life. We could play a Diagraph Scavenger and not like, exile any creatures. But yeah, stopping this from attacking is quite appealing. I mean, the perf... But the um, best thing to do would be... To do that in his upkeep phase. But I'm going to... Because I've got so many of these. I am going to tap that down. Draw another card. Get my two life points back. Okay. He's got a good uh, good defender there. Oh, the other thing is, this gets cheaper if we have a zombie. I've just remembered that, that little uh, detail. Right, so we've got motivation to play this zombie bear. Uh, it's a good blocker. He's got a bit of an army assembled. Um, or I could play a desperate farmer. And these guys will get through. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go for the Diagraph Scavenger. Because that's just unfortunately the best thing to do. I guess I don't know if I was I maybe should have swung in with the farmer there because he'd have blocked here, but I still gained two life. These have got first strike. That becomes a three-three trample. He gets his two red mana, uh, and he can pump this up. So I think here's, this is the idea, just block with the Death Toucher. So we'll get to push through some more damage. But he's got a short strike as well, nice. Oh well. So if I, even if I double blocked, it would have killed both my guys. See if this gets blown up by an abraid now. That would be my guess. Okay, it's gonna get bounced, fair enough. Yeah. Well, this is this is a uh, mythic limited player, I guess. It's a shame, yeah, that... Okay, well, Repository Scarb we could play as a blocker without the exploit. We can tap down Deadly Dancer. Um, and then just see if he's got even more short strikes, try and block something. Uh, yeah, we'll get a 3-3 blocker out, and we'll stop in his upkeep. That is the plan. Decline. Good card. Right, any humans? That's, well, that, yes, there is actually a human there.
creepy puppeteer. Oh my goodness. So he can make something else a 4-3. That's nice. Well, that's his, uh, I guess, one of his rares. So it will block there. We'll take four. Okay, always yeah. use the Evolving Wilds because we can dig a land out of our deck. You see how effective this Blood Petal Celebrant is? Just having first strike on attack, it just has rendered my deck very ineffective, which is a shame. Okay, I think... Uh, well, we're only on five, unfortunately. He can just... Uh, if that thing's not untapping. Um, we could play Persistent Specimen. We could Parasitic Grasp the Flame Breather to gain three life. Uh, which kind of gives away what I'm doing, but it mean, it might mean less damage if he's got a spell. I think we'll... Tell you what, we'll hold the Parasitic Grasp and end the turn. Maybe we can afford to take one point of damage. Okay. Um, sure. It's kind of ridiculous not killing the deadly dancer with this, but we might have to. Okay, put a lantern bearer in there. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, let's take a point of damage. It's going to make something unblockable. And give a card and gain some life as well. Sacrificing that, okay, sure. So that's uh, two damage going through. So yeah, we have held off cast using Parasitic Grasp. We could now use it to kill the Deadly Dancer. Uh, maybe that is the best policy here. Okay, interesting. We've got Bleed Dry. Didn't know I was going to top deck that. <laughs> so, uh, I think we can still Parasitic Grasp. Well, the Kessig Flame Breather is kind of a, a big threat as well. Okay, I think, yeah, just keep our options open. So Bleed Dry is going to happen on Deadly Dancer, right. We'll do this, I think it makes sense to do this whilst he's tapped out. And we'll do a uh, Parasitic Grasp on the Vampire. Maybe we need to do this on a Vampire. Just an impossible situation, I think. Uh, we'll swing with a Desperate Farmer because we're not going to block with it. So we can gain a bit more life. Makes sense.
Go for that, gets flying. It's three, two, yeah. And then two more spells and I die. Oh, it has sure strike. All right, good game. Well, my strategy, I chose a strategy there, which was use my removal spells whilst he was tapped out in case he had counter magic. But um, also against his style of deck I, with lots of combat tricks, possibly better to use use the removal reactively. Because I knew he had lanterns left in his graveyard if I, if I thought about it. So... Yeah, we were under a lot of pressure there, but I don't yeah, I don't think I don't think I chose the right course of action there, definitely in hindsight. And possibly just yeah, killing the one three, dude. because uh, it was just gonna keep doing keep uh, doing damage. Probably would have been the right right thing to do. I didn't know I was going to top deck the bleed dry, so I was, I was kind of holding on to it, thinking I might kill the 3 3 with it. And I think I should have swung in more with the uh, farmer just to gain life. Okay, well, we can find our swamp with that. Turn two drop. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Okay, we top deck to swamp, so we'll just go with the blood fountain plan. Wedding invitation. So another red black vampires deck. I love I love it. I love top decking my wretched throngs when I've already got the only other wretched throng. <laughs> it just happens every time. But there you go. It's probably not uh, statistically improbable, I guess. Oh look, this guy again. Right, uh, we can do a chill of the grove, can't we? I think we want the evolving wilds now, um, and we're gonna I mean we could tap him down or we could get another wretched throng out I think uh, let's build up the pressure, let's get another wretched throng out And uh, we'll dig for that swamp. This is only this only gets scary if he's got two creatures to attack with, because he might have a haster, which is very likely. He might have the daybreak combatants. Blood hypnotist. Okay, nice. Right, we don't have any spells to bring back with our repository scarb. Uh, we want to tap down the suitor in his turn. Okay, no attacks. We've got a blood token, we could discard the land as well. So this is... Whenever you sacrifice a blood token, you can make something unable to block. I 
am going to double block. Try and take this hypnotist down. Seems quite scary, to be honest. Oh, Undying Malice, one of the wretched throngs as well. He might have instant removal in response, but no, okay. I don't think we have the third one, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, decline, and then that comes back. And we have a 3 2. Diagraph Scavenger, so we can eat my uh, other zombie. It's not coming back. Fair enough. Blood Fountain of his own. Okay, I'm gonna drop an island. It's my 5 mana, is my. Uh, Top end, I think. Okay. He's probably quite happy to trade off Diagraph Scavenger here. We can um, I think uh, yeah, I think I want to swing in. I'm, I'm, I don't mind trading off. We've both got blood fountains in this, I guess. He's gonna let that damage through. I don't want to sacrifice the throng with a scarb yet. Uh, we'll, we'll build up the board. We'll get out the, the phalanx, and that's a nice, nice big blocker, at least for the um, alluring suitor. Direct damage, wow. That's that is interesting. Getting rid of some excess lands. Yep. I need a bit of that uh, kind of action now. Uh I think we'll just keep yeah. We'll keep playing out lands. I think Swamp's more important. Uh Phalanx is not a good blocker for the scavenger. Wretched Throng is, um, he's way ahead on life, so I think I do, I do not swing in here. I don't think that makes any sense. Uh, I can sacrifice Wretched Throng. Do I really want to do that? It's good. To, I don't really want to do that, to be honest. Um, right, I think... I think we do nothing. We do nothing now. It, this is the trouble. I, you, I don't have it again. I, 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 last time I played the zombie deck, same problem. I didn't find enough fodder creatures. I had like again. I had two wretched throngs, and maybe three Solhof and tumors. So it's a bit of a problem when you don't, really don't want to. Um, Oh yeah, he's transforming, of course. There was a play where we could have brought back our Chill of the Grave. So we'll block here and block here. Decline. Don't think we'll have much luck finding it. And kind of only want to play the Blood Fountain when we can get two creatures back. Right, here, here he comes, the uh, Digraph Scavenger.
think the repository scarb sacrifices itself here. Uh, the trouble is we're on 7 mana. So we can't repository scarb, sacrifice itself, get a card back and avoid the diagraph scavenger. Unfortunately, I think we have to use the fountain now. I mean, it kind of depends on what we top deck. Um, Okay, I'm going to use this now just to get one creature back. Because we don't know what we're going to top deck. It could be something amazing that fixes the problem. But Hey, it's catapult fodder. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, I am going to play this island. So it looks like hitting 8 mana is quite important for the deck. Uh, repository scarb. Wretched throng. I guess we don't want to put any targets in the graveyard for his dude. So I'll play Wretched Throng. And I'll play Catapult Fodder. And he can use Blood Tithe Harvester if he wants to kill my Wretched Throng and then take it away from the grave. Right, now we can stop Unhallowed Phalanx from blocking. Does he want to use the Harvester first, though, before he sacrifices the Blood Token? Another Blood Token, okay. No mana to sacrifice them with. Desperate Farmer is a good hit. Okay, I'll see any creature I dump in the graveyard, he's going to get with his bear. But that's okay. I think I can lose a Wretched Throng here. So, yeah, we'll... Unfortunately, yeah, we do tap out. Do we want Undying Malice or Chill of the Grave? I think Undying Malice is pretty cool. That probably does more for us. And we can flip our Desperate Farmer, so it's pretty awesome. Decline. We don't have mana to get to uh, use that, but... Um, Oh yeah, he can uh, totally trade off and kill that, so that's fine. And then he's got a good target for Scavenger. Will this be the game I actually sacrifice something? Uh, like, we can't do it yet. We haven't even transformed it, that's the trouble. Right, that can get to 5-5. Five, five. It's annoying, um, and he can, yeah, make one of my guys unable to block. And that's quite a lot of damage, actually. So it's going to stop the Scarb from blocking, so I just can't kill anything. Uh, and I'm going to, I guess, 
Wait a minute, this can pump up to four damage, I guess. Uh, I can pump that to six damage as well. Okay, so two blockers. He's always got this to make something unblockable, so yeah. And it looks like we're dead next turn. We've got a desperate farmer. Bit of lifelink. You can make one thing unblockable. You can make so you can make that a five five unblockable. He can pump it to six with a dancer. And then he can stop this guy from blocking to give to stop me getting any lifelink. So I think it's good game. But yeah, two uh, Rakdos vampire decks in a row, both pretty strong. Yeah, correct target. Yeah, it was yeah, two deadly dancers in a row I've had to run into. Yeah, the, lot, the previous one had the 2 1 first strike on attack, dude. That's what cast Undying Malice on that guy. Don't think that makes any difference. No. I don't think there's any uh, drastic change to the deck that's going to improve my results here. I've got more repository scarves I could put in. But we're just ending up on the back foot, really, every game. Because, well, because Black, black Red Vampires is very aggressive. Uh, I, I, expect, I fully expect this will be a 0-3, but that's, you know, if you're in Platinum and you don't draft the perfect deck, um, that is going to be a... Uh, a risk, I guess. We, uh, it's the second time I've tried drafting blue black zombies, and I just didn't, again, I didn't get any, I got hardly any fodder creatures for the exploit thing. I did, well, at this time I did get the persistent specimen, so that's quite cool. We could try a turn one dread fugue and look at his hand, see if he get, has a mana value two card. It's kind of risky. Opponent's going first, and then we know if we want to mind leech ghoul and sacrificing itself, I guess, because we'll get we'll get to look at his hand. So this is this is interesting. We're getting to do the uh, the hand destruction thing. This has to be mana value two, so we can get rid of toxic scorpion. Okay, right. He's got fell stinger there. That's a good good one. Uh, okay, Mind Leech Ghoul. We know he's only got uh, two things. Um, Gluttonous Guest. His, how scary is that? I don't think it's too super scary. Diagraph Scavenger is annoying. But I think the Fell Sting is really nasty. Uh, I think we Mind Leech Ghoul. And he exploits himself. Right, let me... Uh no, I don't get to choose. What am I talking about? He gets let's decline that. Let's decline that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I made a mistake there. It's not it's not that overpowered. That would be a two mana coercion. 
if it got to do that. That would be ridiculous. Yeah. Sometimes I forget how that cards can't be that powerful. Right. Uh, let's play a Desperate Farmer first. He did get his third land. And I think, yeah, we want to play the next Desperate Farmer before we play the Mind Leech Ghoul. Makes sense. Now we can play an Evolving Wilds because we're just playing a Desperate Farmer. Uh, we no, we don't have double black, right? So we are going to swing in. Evolving Wilds. We'll just use it now and get the swamp. Play the next desperate farmer. So it's a pretty good sacrifice pay off this guy. That's a port fodder. Oh, he's got his his combo he's putting together with the phalanx. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I have to say nice to that. Um, okay, so I think. Um, Mind Leech Ghoul sacrifices itself here. Parasitic Grasp doesn't kill anything outright. So I think this is the best choice. Oh, does it happen? Do I get two triggers? No, no, I don't. That would be crazy. Vampire's Kiss is gone. Okay. Pretty cool. Now these guys can double block and kill my Mind Leech Ghoul. So, uh, even though that would mean taking 8 damage. Uh, I will swing in like this. Because, you know, keeping another creature on the board for me is quite important, I think. And we'll go Blood Fountain. hoping he's sacrificing Glartner's Guest, because then I've got Parasitic Grasp for the felt to take out the Felstinger. Okay, my turn. Uh, that would, well that would keep my Depraved Harvesters on the board. Oh, there's the Doom Dissenter. Nice. Um, or we just attack. And if he blocks um, Mind Leech Ghoul, or if he uses Catapult Fodder to block, we can kill it. And that stops this nasty Unhallowed Phalanx problem later. But we win really quickly now if he can't deal with my Depraved har Harvesters. Um yeah, okay, I think I think we just kill the scorpion. So I'm actually gaining quite a lot of life. I don't care if he's chucking an unhallowed phalanx phalanx out my face at the moment. Feels like this is probably about the best my deck is going to do. So I hope I can actually win this one. Well, that's that's interesting. That's the third death touch he's had. We managed to get rid of one with a 
the hand removal card. My turn. So obviously he's got a good block there, a favourable block. You can kill the Mind Leech Ghoul. So maybe we don't attack. But if he does take that block, he's got to take four damage to the face. I think I'm going to discard this swamp now, the blood token. See if we get something relevant, like a bleed dry would be good. Bleed dry off the top? No, it's the swamp. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to be conservative. I'm going to attack with the depraved harvesters. In theory, we've also got a catapult fodder, but it's so hard to actually flip that. I don't think we're going to manage... Um, uh, so the options here... Okay, we don't have another creature in the graveyard yet. I will play a Doom Dissenter. And uh, hold the swamp. Hold the swamp, I think. Yeah. So it's a tricky thing with a phalanx, it comes into play tapped. He has another catapult fodder, that's amazing. And another death toucher. Nice. Okay, so um Right, I am think, so we could just swing in with Depraved Harvester, or trade off with a Toxic Scorpion, and we will Blood Fountain and get back both Desperate Farmers, right? The only issue then, we need a Sacrifice Outlet. Swing in. But getting to 51 life is kind of nice. Um, I guess we already played a land. Oh, he's got the Ancient Lumber Knot, of course, yeah. So these are huge now. And that's going to transform. Uh, we're about to get horribly battered. <laughs> okay, we're going to play these uh, Desperate Farmers because these will flip when I lose a creature. I think... Uh, we'll just hold on to that swamp just in case. So things have turned somewhat, but he's got to get through 51 life points, which is not insignificant. He has his own desperate farmers though. Vampire's kiss, yeah, that's that's going to help. Two damage. Repository Scarb. That's quite exciting. Now, we have Dreadfugue and Parasitic Grasp. Uh, so, how about... So I want to sacrifice... I kind of want to sacrifice Wretched Throng, but maybe sacrificing Doomed Dissenter is better. Fire Swamp. Sacrifice Doom to Center. Get Parasitic Grass back.
And uh, even if this flips, we can kill it with Parasitic Grasp is what I'm thinking. But this might be better served finishing off a Catapult cap Captain that tries to block. But obviously you can kill both my Harvesters if I swing in. I get to kill a cap Catapult Captain. I might want to wait till next turn to attack. I think I'll play my Wretched Throng. I'll do no attacks because we can get maybe two creatures through if we attack with everything next turn. Let's just tap creature out. Okay. So we just obviously we can grasp the life linker. He's only got th which puts him down to three blockers. He blocks the, the big guys. Six damage will go through. Uh, but he'll kill all three of my big guys. He can take three favorable blocks. And then next turn he'll have four blockers and I'll have four attackers. But he'll be on two life. Uh, if I attack with everything... So we could kill the uh, lumber knot. Okay, let's let's play persistent specimen first. Oh uh, dear! Right, yeah, we actually just really need to kill the lumber knot, and then he doesn't have good blocks. And I've used a timeout. But yeah, we've established we can't just kill Desperate Farmer and swing in because we only do six damage. Um, if we leave the Desperate Thought Farmer up and swing in, he still has some very good blocks. We could kill the Lumber Knot, lose two, and get four damage through. Then maybe. He might have another lumber knot to follow up. Um, it's kind of an interesting old situation. I think we've got to be careful here. No attacks and end the turn. I think it's very hard for him to win. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that because I'm on 49 life. I don't need to panic. I have 20 cards left in my deck. He's got 20 cards left in his deck. He can make things unblockable and swing. Oh shit. He can make the unhallowed phalanx unblockable. Okay, so that's 13 damage. Another 13 damage. And then he can chuck it at me for another 13 damage. That's 39 damage. Okay. I guess Doom Descent is gone. Yeah, that's one little minor detail that I um, didn't think about. But I was thinking he might just have another um, Lumber Knot. Okay, how good is Rottide Gargantua here? Um, it's quite good, I think. Uh, we could grasp something first, but it would it be either Desperate Farmer or Diagraph Scavenger. So I think he just, this is just going to make him sacrifice Desperate Farmer anyway. Let's do that. Let's sacrifice a Persistent Specimen. Or a Wretched Throng gets it out of my deck. Put something in the graveyard. Sacrifice a wretched throng. Unless it's been exiled. That would have been embarrassing. Actually, it's just fun to actually get that out of my deck. Oh, yeah, he can um, obviously flip his farmer. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I'll play my wretched throng. But yeah, got rid of a death toucher. That's not bad. 
and I don't get, I get through for about two damage. He's up to ten life now as well. Uh, this might be a bit of a grind fest, so he's got loads of blood tokens. He's going to run out of cards before I do. Spiked Ripsaw, that's cool. So you can make this um, do 16 damage. 16, 32, that's 48 damage. Two unblocked attacks. And then uh, he flings it. We can take out this depraved harvester with parasitic grasp, of course. And then he's got four blockers. One, two, three, four. We get through with five. Get through with seven damage. Every block he does is going to be favorable. So I lose four attackers. Which, uh, that's not so good to be honest. And end the turn. But it all rests on the ancient Lumbernaut's shoulders. Um, He's okay, he's equipping it on the Lumber Knot to kind of keep him alive, because he's very important. But he's not attacking yet. Yeah, there's no need to attack yet. He's got 13 cards left. He's not run out yet. As a my phalanx. If I were to, trouble is, if I were to hit my... Uh, No attacks. I think I have to play the swamp here so I just I can respond with parasitic grasp. That's gonna go on the depraved harvester. So okay, yeah, you're forcing out my parasitic grasp now. Fair enough. I'll kill the harvester. Oh gosh, another phalanx. Okay, that's a couple of 13-13 attackers. Oh, that's big. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I had this guy in the deck. So, zombies you control have flying. Boom. Can we just get through with 10 damage? Does he got any reach? Should be enough. Good game. Yes! <laughs> Karalf. Karalf did it. Did the job. But that was interesting, just figuring out he could actually do me about 48 damage with that phalanx. And I wouldn't be able to respond. And then he had the other phalanx he could sacrifice as well. So it was actually 64 damage he could do to me eventually. With un un unblockable phalanxes and um, catapults. <sighs> So yeah, Ger Geralf came through for me. He was good for a win, so we avoid the 0-3. Okay, uh, turn 1, Persistent Specimen into turn 2, Mind Leech Ghoul. Seems quite good. And then we play on Evolving Wilds, I guess. Right. To get uh, 2 black. Hello? We block his persistent specimen, that's the question. No, I'll let it through. Undead Butler. Nice. Uh, we've got a Diagraph Scavenger, that's pretty good. Um, uh, Wretched Throng. 
for my leech ghoul. I think uh, I think I like digging. I want to dig out the second wretched throng from the deck before I top deck it, so I get value. That's my that's my reasoning. Oh no, <laughs> much cooler throbbing. This guy is a skeleton, he's not a zombie. Uh, I'll take that, I might want to use this persistent specimen. Um, let's play Evolving Wilds, we'll get the swamp. So we're about to play Mind Leech Ghoul, which can block a persistent specimen. So, uh, Mind Leech Ghoul, yes, let's let's do that and sacrifice for Wretched Throng. Yes, please. Cool, lost Rock Tide Gargantua. Good result. Guess it means he can't play it because he's struggling for land. Oh, that's going to get taken out. Nice. I mean, he's going to subject me to the beatdown. Okay. Fair enough. Um. What are my defensive measures here? Okay, well, I will finally block the persistent specimen because it's now a lethal threat. Okay. Wretched throng. Oh good, yeah, you can trade off with Arch Ghoul of Thraben. That's that's the main thing. I wouldn't expect him to swing in with Arch Ghoul of Thraben, to be honest. Be surprised. Okay. He's gone for it. He might have his own Undying Malice, I guess. He might have instant removal to mess up my plans. Let's see. He, he does want to draw another land, doesn't he? That's the thing. Take action and oh, it's not there. Damn. Go, oh, he's taking a land off the top. That's oh, because he had a second arch ghoul. Okay, sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Well, we know what's happening to that arch ghoul. We're going to diagraph scavenger that one. Persistent Specimen might be a good target as well. Um, tell you what, Persistent Specimen can go. Uh, wretched Throng, Wretched Throng. Do we need this as a blocker? I think we can go aggressive now. Now we've got a Death Toucher. It's going to trade off there. Fair enough. Gets his card advantage again. The double Arch Ghoul of Throb and opening. A little bit better than what I've got. Courier Bat, but you didn't gain any life, so you can't bring anything back. That's good. Right. Uh, Chill of the Grave. Will stop two damage from a courier bat in his upkeep. Um, and let's play a persistent specimen at the end of his turn as well. 
we can bring back our Undying Malice with Repository Scrub next turn. Okay. Yeah, let's go on the offensive with Diagraph Scavenger. He could double block here. Just realised. Or he could just block with the Undead Butler and get an Arch Ghoul back, which is pretty good. So maybe I've... Uh, that was maybe a mistake, but he's not he's not gone for it. Oh, that's nice as well. Okay. Okay, Persistent Specimen pops out. What has he got there? The Gutter Skull Cut to make something unblockable. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. He could have Counter Spells, I guess, as well. Okay, Desperate Farmer, I think, I think is an even better plan. Before I uh, do any sacrifice things, that's what you want, I think. Ah, uh, there's the blood fountain. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, my turn. There's my blood fountain. Are we just going to keep tapping down this courier bat, is the question. Because then we want to play catapult fodder, if we do that. Uh, or we do, yeah, I think we do Repository Scarb and might have a counter spell here, but let's see. I'd like a 4-3 life linker, I think. And yeah, Undying Malice is pretty good. And we can protect our creatures, so I don't think you don't want to tap out and play Blood Fountain. Just yet. So he's got like the kind of the perfect reanimation kind of deck here. But it's it is slow. It does cost mana to uh, do all these plans. We've just been we've now been a bit more ag um, aggressive on the ground, so he can get his arch call back now. But that was uh, I don't think there was much we could do to stop that. Is 
still has another arch ghoul in there. I think we definitely want this island in play. Uh, we don't need to play any of these first. I think we just swing in with everything. Potentially, we have a really good Undying Malice to play here as well. Okay. Fair enough. I think we'll un Yeah, let's use the Undying Malice here. Because it eventually becomes a 5-4 lifelinker. That seems pretty powerful. a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, we um, do we play Catapult Fodder here? It's only going to be one extra damage. Uh, yeah, I think so. And then we've got a, ch a Chill of the Grave. Blockers. Okay. Right, we will chill the grave on the innocent traveler. Uh, we should be able to just swing in and win, right? Or maybe not. Yeah, that's up to six damage getting through. Hey, we ground out a second win. Not bad. Okay. It's a good number of land. Uh, Wretched Throng and Mind Leech Ghoul. It's quite good. Okay. Okay, it looks like he mulliganed to six. I'd like to see Diagraph Scavenger. That's, that's my turn. I've got a turn four play. So this guy is very interesting. Just try to remember he can get first strike by exiling three cards from his graveyard. So blue white spirits, there's the Brian Coma. And that's quite dangerous from the graveyard. because uh, it can, can use that to enchant things. Okay, play a swamp here. Uh, Wretched Throng, do we, I don't think we just, yeah, we don't particularly want to run this into his team, because it dies to all trades with a 1-1, one, one. Uh, I think I'm going to Mind Leech Ghoul, no, sacrifice the Wretched Throng, I'm 
actually getting some wretched throng value. Only two wretched throngs, which is, is nice to see. I'm not drawing both of them every single game. Just an island, okay, and play Blood Fountain. Okay, um, Brian, if we block a Brian Coma, what happens? He can then replay it on a Fleeting Spirit. So I think I'll, I'll block the Fleeting Spirit. Um, he can't give it first strike yet. Seems like a good trade. And we can scavenger it. Oh, okay, he's got Adamant Well. We have a combat trick gamer. So it's not time for the Diagraph Scavenger just yet. Uh, Mind Leech Ghoul, how good is that to just sacrifice, make him exile a card? Because a 2-2 two -two block is quite good. We, yeah, we could sacrifice another throng, make him exile a card. Check again, yeah. Damn. So, I mean, that cost us a card to get rid of a card, but now he's... Okay, it was another island, fair enough. <laughs> I'm guessing, so he doesn't need any more uh, than this. He's going to play that island and Heron of Hope, okay. I guess he's holding back land to discard, which is probably very sensible. Uh, now I've got a problem. So, um, uh, I think we want to stop in upkeep. We'll play catapult fodder here. Then we can tap down Heron of Hope. And we are on the back foot against the spirit stack unsurprisingly. Okay, we have a wretched, uh, a couple of wretched throngs and a mind leech ghoul we can bring back from the graveyard. Um, I'm going to play a persistent specimen. I've got a swamp here I could probably discard, so I think I'll hold that. And we might, it, this might be a blood fountain turn, I'm thinking. I could exile my own creature, but that just seems... doesn't seem good. Okay, little blood fountain. Mind each ghoul and a wretched throng. He's got one card in hand. Um, what's the biggest power sink in this set? I think it's a three point power sink. It could be what he's got. Oh, syncopate is X. Guy Slight Snare is three points. Okay. Okay, let's. Um, 
So you could do a three pointer here. I'm probably fine. I could probably hold these lands, but I'm going to play a swamp just in case. So we're just going to mind leech ghoul and sacrifice persistent specimen here. Is he just holding a land? Has he got an instant? Uh, is he going to discard it to Fleeting Spirit? So he doesn't. So it goes to the graveyard, okay. Because that he wants to fuel the graveyard for his Fleeting Spirit. Um, okay, cool, right. I can bring back a persistent specimen. That might be the best policy, actually, and then use the blood token to get rid of the island. So we're dead in five turns now. He's going to get a bunch of lifelink from that. I suspect I have no flyers in. Oh, apart from um, Garolf. Garolf is my flying thing. Okay, so we can play back. This. We can drop an island. Hello, hello. Right. Bleed dry and we get a repository scarb. Oh. Sometimes I like this game. He might have a counter spell. Can he cast Geist Light Snare? Oh yes, he definitely can. Do we risk it? We've got six mana. This could get we could lose this to Geist Light Snare. But he's in the thing is, he's in the beatdown position here. He doesn't need to tap his mana at all. Um, I think we'll we'll just try it right now. Because I do beat Syncopate here. If That's pretty cool. And I think we just play out a Wretched Throng. And no attacks. And the question is, what's the next thing we bleed dry? We do we have to bleed dry this one one spirit flyer? It's it possibly. Uh I think uh Brine Coma is quite good to get rid of. But equally, I guess, um, Kindly Ancestor. That would mess up his situation on the ground, and I could start swinging in myself and attacking. He could play Brian Coma. He could block and bring this back as an aura. Uh, it's all very interesting. Dread Fugue. For three mana. We've only got six, so if I do play that, that's the only thing I can do this turn. Let's. Rep I think we're going to repository for the bleed dry, to be honest. Seems like the best thing to do. That is another 3 3 creature as well on the great. On the, um, in play. I 
think it's just too depressing to kill a 1-1 one, one token with lead dry. <laughs> I don't think I can face it. I'd actually rather kill Kindly Ancestor and start swinging in on the ground. Then he can um, block with, if he blocks with Brian Coma, I can eat it up with Diagraph Scavenger. And then obviously it's very hard to kill Fleeting Spirit because he's got, as long as he can discard a card. Ah, as long as he can discard a card, we can uh, stop that from Potentially. Unless it's a land. It's always a non-land card, isn't it? This is giving him some pause. Okay, I don't want to play Dread Fugue. I don't want to do anything else. No attacks. And turn. Now he could have top decked a counter spell, uh, but I think. We want to play this land, so we've got seven land, so we can at least play around the Geist Light Snare. I think we're going to... Okay, in fact, it's three mana plus four mana is seven mana. I think we dread... We can just... Because we can, let's Dread Fugue first. See what he got. Two lands, I'm guessing. Catapult Fodder can just stay back on defense. There's not much point attacking with it. Oh! Catapult Fodder got blown up. Fair enough. That's, that's out of there. Okay, the one problem I have here... Um, the plan of exiling. Okay, that was that was a good hit. Okay, bleed dry. We'll do on your upkeep step. Uh, on kindly ancestor. Not going to attack because I can't exile Brian Coma basically with Diagraph scavenger. But we could do it on... F it's a chance to kill Fleeting Spirit. I think Kanye Ancestor is kind of more to the point, though. Okay, he's going to attack with everything. Right. So... Right. That, that means he's got he's got the Brian Coma plan of letting it die and putting it on something to make auras. Which is fair enough. Um, I'm going to let him do that. I'm just going to... Fingers crossed I get more removal... Uh, Wretched Throng will trade for... So he's... Oh, that's right. He's got um, First Strike on this guy. I think... I'll have to just accept losing the Throng here. Because we're in a bit of a race. don't think we can 
afford to just take three damage. Maybe I should let the Brian Coma through, but. I think we had all of them, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, he's got the aura out so they can make another 1 1. He's going to cast it on that one. So now he gets two damage through every turn. Right, so I think it's just time for Diagraph Scavenger. We'll eat the Dreadlight Monstrosity. It just makes sense to me. Uh, let's see. Two mana. I've got seven mana, so I'm pl still playing around the Geist Light Snare if I do this. And I can bring back Persistent Specimen as well. And it's a case of what do we want to chuck in the way of... Um, Fleeting Spirit, we could chuck Diagraph Scavenger in the way, to be honest. I think that's fine. Uh, so we're just racing now. I'm going to attack with everything. You know, it comes back tapped. It might be a blunder to have done this. We'll just see if he gets more um, auras. He literally, yeah, he literally needs auras to make more flyers. So I'm dead in five more turns. Oh, he got the Twin Blade Geist. Ah, oh, that's a really good one. Especially on Disturbing uh, Fleeting Spirit. Okay, my turn. Oh. A, the specimen. So he's got a block here with um, Fleeting Spirit. Good. Another blocker. Persistent Specimen can block. And we just have to swing in with everything. F fingers crossed. And this obviously can make is another another aura. But yeah, we are just straight up racing now. He can't give that first strike. But he can yeah trade off for something. Those are gonna trade off. So he's going to have three damage in the air next turn, and then four damage the next turn. We've got six damage on the ground. So we'll see. We might have three. Looks like we might have three turns in the air. Three turns in the air. Three turns. going to go down to the wire I think but we don't know what his two cards are here uh, see if I can top deck anything so this should be three damage it's fine oh no it's loads of damage nice so I'm dead next to him okay I think we play the island here let's see we've got eight mana Five mana to play and use Blood Fountain and, that, and get something back. I think it's a little bit, yeah, chill. You see, it's, it's really involved. We'd need Pository Scab to bring back Bleed Dry, and this is all very expensive. It's all too expensive, unfortunately. I just played the island. I could have discarded it with a blood token to find 
different answer. So that was that was a bit hasty there, unfortunately. Because unfortunately this plan is a bit looks like it's a bit too uh slow. So we just swing in with everything. No, I guess there is a. Hmm. Uh, try the blood fountain idea and just see what we can do. So, uh, we'll have three mana to play with. I think we'll go for the the plan that would work. Let's say if he missed his turn, uh, and we'll go with. Maybe Mind Leech Ghoul. Or Mind Leech Ghoul and sacrifice the Doom Dissenter here. Little planes. Uh, and the turn. I think that's a good game. Yeah. That combat trick just doing it doing it for me for him. If you remember, he had another combat trick earlier in the game, so I guess that was a uh, potential uh, indicator. Okay, I'm dead. I'm going to just discard the repository scarb and um, see what I would have got. Another island. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah, it's always difficult dealing with flyers. It feels like maybe 60% of the games are uh, determined by f who has the better flyers. Sometimes it's big creatures that win and they just overwhelm the flyers. Uh, we, uh, of course, we did. We took out Cruel Witness, which may have been a mistake, but um, it, it's not a zombie, so it got it got dropped. Um, you probably, on balance, catapult fodder plan. Probably not going to do it in this deck, so I think we drop catapult fodder. And we drop Am that means we can drop Unhallowed Phalanx. That's the, really the only reason Unhallowed Phalanx is in the deck. Then we could have tr Cruel Witness, Repository Scab number three, because that's that's the plan of this deck. We actually got some decent removal spells, I think. So that might have done a might have done a better job, I think. Uh, yeah. So. We we first picked Geralf, Visionary Stitcher, who gives all zombies flying. And I have lost as I've lost to other zombie decks that have this card. So I thought, right, first pick, we're committed to zombies. I think I think I did get the uh Or maybe I didn't. Could have sworn I got the black white card. No, I think maybe I ignored it and I went straight for a mind leech ghoul pick two. Uh yeah, mind leech ghouls were pretty cool, I think. Um Bit of early hand pressure, and we had uh, a dread fugue as well to go with it, which that that wasn't terrible. That, that got rid of a dread light monstrosity in the last game, so that worked out reasonably well. Blood fountains are definitely a good idea in this deck. The last zombie deck, I um, I actually cut the blood fountains, which I think in hindsight was a mistake. It gives you a bit of long game, and you've got the blood token to help you in the early game, so. I think it's a good it's a good all rounder this card. Uh, persistent specimen. I finally got. So I, this, the difference. My my previous zombie deck went zero three, and it just had I think two wretched throngs as the fodder cards pretty much, 
Uh, so we had persistent specimen and a doomed dissenter. So it's it's getting there. But ideally, you'd have like six or seven fodder cards. You'd have the bio loom egg. That's what every zombie deck plays that against me. They they always seem to, yeah. My opponents seem to always get the perfect cards uh, for their uh, strategies. Obviously, yeah. I, I mean, I've got gear off. I suppose I can't I can't complain. Um, yeah, undying malice is another. I guess that's a fifth kind of enabler for exploit because you can. Um, bring a creature, your sacrifice creature back with it. So, so yeah, this is definitely a good one. It's quite fun bringing this back with Repository Scarb as well. Uh, then we've got a nice removal spell, Parasitic Grasp, three damage and gain three life. Not bad at all. Uh, a couple of Chill of the Graves. Yeah, this was good. This, this really helped. This helped me win one game. I just tapped down a blocker and just got through with Lethal. Uh, it's nice, it's a cantrip, it's nice and cheap. It's going to be two mana in this deck as well. Catapult Fodder was bad in this deck, honestly. I still, it's the third time I've played it, I still haven't sacrificed a creature with it. Um, and this was a bad deck for Catapult Fodder, and it was a mistake to play it, I think. But um, as I say, because it's sometimes you can just link cards together into like little strategies little sub themes and if you're not playing the sub theme you can cut all of those cards so you can as i say you can cut catapult fodder and on a hallowed family links and go with the maybe two repository scarbs or the scarb and a cruel witness so uh in fact would there be anything else we'd want to drop no i think everything else is pretty good but yeah in hindsight that's i think that's definitely what I'd go for. I think it's just sentimentality for for the catapult fodder. I wanted. To, I still want to try and uh, get this thing to work and throw an unhallowed phalanx at somebody. I thought just because I had the phalanx, it was going to be worthwhile. But yeah, it's just too hard to flip at the moment. Now, desperate farmer. I, believe it or not, I was thinking of dropping this from the deck because it's not a zombie, but it's absolutely fantastic and goes really well in the exploit deck. And this is this is the key to one of my wins, just swinging in with two of these early and going up to about, uh, I think, 48 life points. <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous. Um, that was that was against a Golgari uh, butt stick as well that, that had a, a working catapult strategy. He had two catapults, the Lumber Knot, and two Unhallowed Phalanxes at the end. That was quite an interesting game because he had, uh, had two wedding announcements, uh, not wedding announcements, two... Uh, don't even have it here. Wedding invitations. So he could he had he could have gone for got through with two unblocked attacks with Phalanx for with and he could have given it the spiked ripsaw. So he could have got through for thirty two unblocked damage. He had two phalanxes as well. He could have thrown both of them at me with his catapults. Um one by one whilst they're equipped with the spike rips or to do 32 more damage so he had, he had 64 damage on the board but I think I won at the end because I drew Geralt and I was able to swing in over the top for, for lethal so um, yeah that was an, that was definitely an interesting game but that's how you're supposed to use the catapult fodder I think be kind of it's very uh, reliant on uh, what the draft gives you this one one catapult one unhallowed phalanx is not going to cut it I think uh, yeah, Desperate Farmer, fantastic. Repository Scarb was, was fantastic as well. We could have played more of them, but because um, of the mana curve, I felt I had to drop some four drops. But maybe we could have got away with it. Maybe we could, we could have played both of those and the Cruel Witness. Um, yeah, because uh, this, this is a powerful effect, being able to recycle bleed dries and things like that. I think that's what we should have gone for. Uh, yeah, Bleed Dry, obviously fantastic, and it exiles as well. Kills everything in the set, unless you can get like a plus one, plus one token on your Phalanx or something. Uh, Diagraph Scavenger is very important in the set. Uh, I had that plan to take out the guy's Brine Coma in the last game. Probably a bad idea to block that Brine Coma. Should have... Blocking that one damage wasn't going to be as good as... Um, 
you know, letting it through so he can't make an extra flyer. Uh, but yeah, getting the um, the double strike for a dude. Yeah, I think I think um, I was a bit previous with the Diagraph Scavenger, so I used it to get rid of his Dreadlight Monstrosity from the graveyard. Uh, probably should have held on. Yeah, I needed to be more, a bit more patient, to hold on to it a bit longer. There was a, would have been an opportunity later to exile his uh, double strike guy from the graveyard because that's obviously going to be his plan. But I was just, I was just hoping he was going to draw dead and not, not get anything else good. I thought let's get another two three beta on the board because it's a race and it and it's we're playing this whilst it can do a two point drain life so it just uh yeah there was there were i was a bit too pressured i guess i wasn't patient enough to wait with this but uh, i know it's it's just yeah he topped it obviously topped deck something pretty good um i mean getting the uh the double strike aura and top getting a, a plus two plus two combat trick and this is like after i've done quite a lot of um hand attacks really i think i had two mind leech ghouls early and then later on i did a dread fugue which got which got rid of the dreadlight monstrosity and then he just managed to top deck the win after that unfortunately but there you go that's magic for you uh what tide guard can't show he saw this once that that made him sacrifice something and then finally the phalanx uh mainly just a big blocker in this deck so yeah probably probably shouldn't have played this but there you go i think that's that's why i end up doing two go uh, last three drafts uh i've gone two and three uh but uh yeah i thought it was I mean, I went zero two so, uh, at the start, so I thought it was going to be zero three. So uh, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised to get a, at least a couple of wins out of it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So I think we will. I've probably added this to decks already, but I'll just do it again just in case. Two hundred gems and a pack. So that takes us up to. Quite a few packs. Yeah, we don't have enough gold to do another one. 24 packs. Uh, yeah, I think that is a video. So uh, thanks for watching. I think later I'm just going to open the open. That's that's my last Crimson Vow draft, I think. So I'm going to just open those packs. And then I can wildcard my uh, any rare lands I'm missing, I think. So yeah, thanks again for watching.